Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. And we're back here on Access Tech Live. Now, Mark, we're going to talk about audiobooks now, right? Well, more like the audiobooks platform. You see, Stephen, Audible is one of the biggest platforms for consuming audiobooks. And while the Amazon-owned company is known for giving you access to the books, what about the platform itself? A question we asked ourselves. How accessible is it? And what does accessibility mean to them when you actually talk about the platform? Well, I caught up with their country manager and found out more. Georgia Knox is the Canada Country Manager for Audible and joins us now on the show. Georgia, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell our audience, for those who might not know, maybe they've been living under a rock or two, what Audible is? Uh, sure, Mark, and it's great to be here. So Audible is the leading creator and distributor of premium audio storytelling, uh, and that really includes three main areas. So that's podcasts. Uh, audiobooks, uh, which I, I know you know very, very well, and um, really excitingly, Audible Originals. Uh, and Audible Originals are our content that we create directly with creators with the audio-first listening experience in mind. Uh, they cross different genres and formats. Let, let's talk about those originals for a second here. I know we're going to go back and forth on a, a bunch of different topics here, but, you know, audiobooks by nature are one of the most accessible uh, forms of medium out there because they're audio-based, right? So it's turning the written word into an audio form. So when it comes to accessibility, which is what we talk a lot about on this show, um, just by nature, you know, I'm saying the word audiobook, they're accessible. Um, but, but I got to ask you about those originals for a second because, you know, Audible doesn't have to go out and create their own original content. What is the driving force behind creating original content? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think it is kind of tied to that, the, those foundations in accessibility, which was um, there's such a richness of storytelling that can be told. And by conceiving of an audio first, it can really elevate that opportunity for those stories to be told in a different way. Um, whether that's uh, the perspective, the soundscape that's used, the multitude of performers that are used to, uh, to deliver that content, um, that's the foundation for originals. And then for us specifically for Canadian Originals, where we launched them in 2020, it was to um, really focus in on Canadian content created by Canadians for Canadians uh, to elevate the stories across the country. You know, I think if um, someone thinks of Audible, um, they'll think, you know, they download the app, they can buy books, et cetera, et cetera. But you guys have expanded the reach of what you're doing to partners like Air Canada, for example, which I think is a pretty significant expansion, a little a little leg, so to speak, or a wing. Let's use the word wing, because it makes that content, especially that original content, more accessible to people in terms of just physically seeing and discovering it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was great. Uh, I think I briefly appeared appeared with you last year to tell you about that that collaboration, and it's been since October. Um, a range of Audible content is now available uh, in flight on uh, Air Canada flights uh, across two dedicated channels. So one's audiobooks, um, and one is originals. Uh, we refresh that content. We actually have a really exciting refresh coming up next month, uh, and we're also going to launch for the first time a family listens dedicated channel as well. That's so cool. Uh, let's talk about the platform uh, for a second here, because, you know, as we said, audiobooks by, by nature are accessible. But, you know, when it comes to the platform itself, it's important to, you know, take accessibility across the board, right? It's the platform. It's how people are using it, how they're consuming it. Do they have the tools? What do you what do you guys do when it comes to, you know, working on accessibility and that aspect of things, making sure that regardless of ability or disability, people can access the platform and access the content? Yeah. And I think um, a great thing that you said at the beginning is that, like, Audio storytelling in itself is an accessibility tool, right? It's kind of, it's inherent in what we do. Um, and, and our very, our kind of like reason for being is grounded in this. So, you know, Audible has a really interesting origin story. I won't go through the whole thing, but, you know, our, our founder was running in a park in the mid 90s holding a big tape recorder, you know, and thinking how crazy is it in the age of the, of the internet that I that we can't listen, make, listen to more books or consume more books. And so the idea for Audible was born. Um, and, you know, there's a lot, a lot in it, but the idea and the technology back then was ahead of its time um, and the early years required a lot of thought leadership uh, and a lot of innovation uh, and that continues to underpin everything that we, we do today. Um, and a lot of our early adopters were uh, listeners with accessibility and obviously particularly those with visually impaired needs. Um, yeah, 
Tell me about some of the partnerships, because you have partnerships with different organizations um, when it comes to giving people access to not only the content that you make, but also just the vast library of content that exists before, like libraries, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in addition to the, the things that we're doing, and we can talk to some of those, uh, in 2021, uh, specifically for Canada, we collaborated with the Centre for Equitable Library Access, uh, which, uh, you know, provides content to the over 3 million Canadians with print disabilities to provide audiobooks. Um, and that catalogue's been growing over the last few years and we now have hundreds available. Um, we have stuff like them, The Martian by Andy Weir, um, most recently Unbroken by Angela Sterrett, who's also one of our Indigenous Writer Circle mentors um, of, of past years. Um, and similar to like Seela's mission, we, we aim to kind of focus primarily on Canadian content, but we're providing a range in, in, um, in, you know, in response to the demand for what those listeners are after. I got to tell you a little story because we were talking to my son's doctor and we were talking about ways to try and get him to use that reading portion of his brain. And something I, I, that was caught me by surprise was she was telling us how, you know, listening to an audiobook uses the same amount and the same part of your brain as reading a book does. And it's as good for him cognitively to listen to an audiobook than it is to read. And that, of course, got his attention going because suddenly he was more interested in that aspect. Have you heard similar stories like that or is there any data about that? Uh, I mean, yes, we, we have. And I think it's so interesting because that like is listening cheating uh, kind of mentality was something that um, we faced or, or were in the thick of a lot for, for many like early years. And I think what's really transpired is that audio listening and reading are totally complementary. Um, uh, you can do one or the other if that is your preference, or you could easily do both. Um, and there is not this same kind of, I guess, stigmatism over listening or consuming content via listening being any uh, any less beneficial to what it is from a reading perspective. Yeah, I know. I've spoken to some people who um, do various audiobook programs on our channels. And, you know, there's a debate going on. Some people think that um, listening to an audiobook by the author um, is a little bit more of a genuine experience because you're hearing it in the author's voice, not only literally, but also the intonations and the, and the expression and that feeling they're trying to get across. Whereas listening to just a narrator kind of read a book, that still leaves a little bit to the imagination. And some love creating that, you know, theater of the mind themselves yet some like that to be done for them. Do you have a personal preference? I think it really depends on the nature of the content. You know, last year, for example, was the big year of the celebrity memoirs. I mean, they're always big for us. Let's not, let's not get that wrong. But last year you had, you know, Prince Harry at the beginning of the year, followed by, you know, Britney Spears and about Barbara Streisand at the end of the year. Um, and look, admittedly, Britney didn't narrate her own memoir, but, but the other two did. Um, I mean, Michelle Williams did Britney and that was still just like an absolutely amazing performance. Um, but for things like that, as and where you can, having that celebrity voice tell their own story in your ear, I mean, there's there's nothing better. It, it, it's, it's like a real treat. Um, it's as close as many most of us are going to get to personally, you know, uh, liaising with a celebrity um, and, and authentically telling their story. Yeah, I guess there's a difference there between like fiction, you know, fiction where you're, 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 it's written to give you the theater of the mind, right? They want you to take your own kind of interpretation to it. Whereas something that's more, I guess, reference, you know, you know, bio bios, you know, for example, it's a little bit different to hear it with that person's voice. Exactly, and, and that's it. You know, science fiction, fiction, thriller, romance. I mean, these are great, uh, great genres that. There is such a plethora of amazing performers and narrators that this is what they do. You know, they, it, it, it's their career to uh, deliver these stories in the most compelling ways, and and you know, most often they are the best place to be to be um, you know performing this content for for our listeners. I got to ask you the difficult question, and uh, I know people will probably throw this at you, and it's hard to answer the question, which is about AI voices, right? Synthetic voices, because it's getting better. You know, it's getting a lot better. We put people to the test on a couple of different shows and, and they were unable to actually decipher some of the differences. Is Now, while I think it does take away from the the human element of it, I think, do you feel there might be a use case for it, like down the road to, to get more content out there? Or is it something that you kind of shy away from? Yeah, I mean... I mean, and it might have been inherent in my, my last response with, which inspired you to ask the question, but, but we've always prioritised professional narration and, and, and that continues to be where we see, you know, the fundamentals of our future. But, like, in saying that, exactly what you're saying is true. 
I mean, we see a future where human performance and text-to-speech AI-generated content will and can coexist, um, and we're evaluating what that looks like for us. Um, we don't have this in Canada, but there is a small beta with Kindle Direct Publishing right now in the, in the US where um, some independent authors can publish um, titles to Audible using um, uh, TTS. So what do you what do you got in the pipeline for Audible in terms of things exciting coming up? What have we got? So we're, we're continuing to, you know, invest in our Canadian originals. We've had two come out so far this year. Um, last month we had exposed the Ashley Madison hack, uh, uh, which take everybody back, you know, 10, 20 years to the early internet age and the retelling of that story. That's performed by uh, Sophie Nelise, who's of Yellow Jackets. Um, and that, I, it was kind of a bit retro, but amazing in some ways to take yourself back through just how huge that scandal was and the ramifications of it still to this day. Um, and then just last week uh, in time for Valentine's or Palantine's or Galantine's or whatever you want to call it, we had uh, Benefits with Friends, which is a podcast with uh, May Martin and Sabrina Jalice, which talks about kind of a lot of uh, potentially taboo subjects that, you know, best friends uh, can get together and, and, and discuss. And that's been super, super well received as well. Uh, we have several more coming down the pike that are going to come out, you know, particularly in, in the next couple of months and then also for, for the rest of the year. I should actually, actually, I just thought of one more. It's not from Canada, but it was just announced today, and that's uh, 1984. Uh, so Audible's multicast, Dolby Atmos enabled, retelling of 1984 starring uh, Andrew Garfield and Cynthia Revo, among a slew of others. Um, so really excited for that one. Oh, and uh, also I wanted to mention that, um, you know, this year where we've just launched the fourth year of our Audible Indigenous Writer Circle program. Um, so that's a six-month mentorship and workshop program for emerging First Nations, Inuit and Métis writers. Um, it's really, really exciting. It leverages our resources and our creative connections to really uplift the stories of Indigenous writers across the country. Mm. So I, I guess I just want to choose this opportunity to say applications just opened. Um, so if you listening or anyone you know um, does, does identify as First Nations Inuit or Métis, please apply for the program. You can go to www.audible.ca slash EP slash IWC and I can get that link to you, Mark, and applications will uh, run until April 1. Georgia, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. It's always a pleasure to have you on. I cannot wait to have you back and talk about some of the uh, evolutions of Audible as it continues to grow immensely. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mark. That is Georgia Knox from Audible, and that URL, again, if you're looking for it, is www.audible.ca slash EP slash IWC. Coming up, it's one of the most watched programs on AMIplus.ca right now. All Access Comedy is a comedy special that was filmed at the Halifax Comedy Festival, featuring an amazing stand-up comedian who happens to have disabilities. We'll hear more about it and that event from one of the headliners, Aaron Belial, after a quick break here on Access Tech Live. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back. Thank you. 